Couch Co-op. Couch Co-Opers, Couch Potatoes, and Couch Codependents. This is the 176th Couch Co-Op Show, and I'm pretty much sure that this is the 166th. Okay. 76th. Yeah. Last time it was the 175th, and I apologize. Congratulations. For Dave well. convincing me that it was 176th. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> You're going to take it for if that you one. Take that, we all kind of did that. The actually. greatest video yeah. the show in the world. We are a group of close friends sharing our love of gaming with you. I'm eating along with uh, Jared. Hello. Uh, well, oh, we're all in wrong. Aaron. Hi. Scott. Home base. And a <laughs> Remember, you can be part of the conversation by leaving comments and questions over on Twitter, Book, Insta, Face, and Gramter. At Couch Club shows all one word. Oh, hi, fan. You can find our uh, podcast wherever they're sold and, uh, you know. Go over to twitch.tv slash the Couch Club Show and you can see us streaming. Wow. And right. my forehead. You can see our lovely faces. Um, yeah. Woohoo! Just our sweet tones. Um, and, and, yeah. Uh, so, how are we doing tonight, guys? Good. Doing good. Good. Uh, Live expensive well. day. Expensive. Mm. Expensive? Yeah. Why is it so expensive, yeah. Jared? She didn't give birth yet. Oh, automobiles. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh. Automobile stuff. Fun times. Um, We're fed. We're full. We're ready to do a show. We were going to have a guest on tonight, but he fell ill. So hopefully next week. Yeah. Get well uh, soon. Get well, buddy. Get well. Get, soon. get well. Oh. Oh. Dad. Good Ooh. plan of words. Dad. Is he your dad? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's... <laughs> your father, good daddy will. Your dad's yeah. gonna be on the show next week. Sure. <laughs> so you're gonna grow an epic beard like that then. Oh man, uh, up years of, of, of grooming and yeah. If you start now, yeah. Um, uh, remember, just want to remember the listeners and maybe Twitch viewers if we ever get one. But nope. Uh, <laughs> give them a minute. Give them a minute. Or they're gonna miss out on uh, RockHeartClothing.com. You can save fifteen percent if you head over to RockHeartClothing.com. Use our promo promo code Couch Co-op, all one word. No hyphen. Uh, support our friends and get some cool gear. Um, JPK uh, shared his. Uh, he 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 bought a hoodie uh, uh, the other day. So uh, I know some people are using it. Cool. Very awesome. Um, again, that's RockHeartClothing.com. Get some. Uh, it's all like metal retro game and uh, inspired designed clothing and apparel and uh yeah go over there get some cool stuff uh quickly build a bar streaming challenge update Ooh. uh actually i have surpassed uh 40 hours i'm at 44.5 hours dang well done uh let's carry the show uh, <laughs> uh, uh jared is at 20 Woo! yay i did it dave and aaron are both at around uh 11 hours yeah and scott yep. is bringing up the caboose at this point at seven and a half hours Scott, social wow. life, Mr. Uh, supposed to be, I'm supposed to be uh, uh, one Mr. Weakest. I have a thousand games I'm gonna stream on Steam. No, it it hasn't, it hasn't even done it yet. It hasn't even come close. Just yet. think a couple of seconds each game. You I, do I, that. That's right. actually exactly what I've been doing. So yeah, uh, you can't be pulling an errand on us, Scott. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, that's my job. <laughs> to get the <dead> last <laughs> one here. <laughs> the PSN card. Thing. The PSN card is. is the the yeah. carrot on the yeah those donkey. sweet BSN dollars <laughs> well yeah all right so uh, yeah so we'll and that's a little update on that but yeah uh, I think we're getting really, I think we'll probably make the hundred hours I'm pr- I'm not sure about the two hundred hours but mm. I'm pretty sure we'll hit the hundred um news and rumors guys I don't know if you know this but this weekend was dominated by Game of Thrones and Star Wars oh yeah yep. wow oh, yeah. and Game of Thrones is not a video game so we're gonna move on to Star Wars. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jedi Fallen Order <laughs> announced teaser or trailer was shown and it releases November 15th. Uh, looks super cool. You play as yeah, a it does. Oh yeah. You play as a, a Jedi after the Order 66 is given and you're trying to stay in hiding and uh, obviously you use your force and the uh, evil force uh, guys come after you and you kill them. I am, I'm, I'm assuming. That's, That's what it looks like in the trailer. Yep. Um, Time to survive. Respawn has said that it's a only a single player narrative. There will be no multiplayer, and there will be no microtransactions. Wow! Ooh. Ooh. 
This is a, again, this is an EA published game, and Respawn <laughs> is the makers of Titanfall and Apex Legends. Yeah, good on you, Respawn. So, yeah. uh, the game is being directed by Sig. Is it? I forget his last name, Rasmussen or something uh, like that. I don't know. I'm anyway, not even gonna guess. Anyway, he Sig is the was the game director of God of War three, so uh, that's pretty cool. So he knows, and I guess it's like an action melee adventure game. So it's gonna be like a God of War game, but I don't think it's gonna be as like melee crazy like the original God of War. I'm gonna think more like the current. I'm gonna say, but we'll I see. Hope so. we'll yeah. find out. It seems like a lot of one on one stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So um, cool. Sounds I'm cool. excited. November. Yeah, I can't wait to see the first oh, gameplay man. reveal of that one. Oh, yeah. They also sh- uh, teased, showed this kind of Vader Immortal VR uh, demo. And it won't be on PSVR. I think it's only an Oculus uh, game. But, um, yeah, you get to play as Vader. Very exciting. Uh, Star Wars The Old Republic MMO is getting this first new expansion in three years. <laughs> what? Which is, uh, which is interesting. Still around. Yeah, still around. Yeah, yeah. Still around. And Bioware obviously still working on it because yeah. it's a Bioware game. Uh, it must be okay. <laughs> must be. I don't know. I thought they kind of that was over with, but anyway. Uh, God of War director of reaffirms that there will be no DLC, but there is a free dynamic theme to celebrate the game's one year anniversary. Yeah, I still need to download that. Me too. Uh, is Gil- is Guerrilla Games working on a new IP, or is there another kill zone in the pipeline? Okay. Also, voice actress says she knows secrets all but confirming Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Xbox One uh, S All Digital Edition. Add images leaked. No disk drive. One terabyte hard drive with games pre installed for 129 euros. So it sounds like it's coming. Wow. Huh. Uh, do you want, any of you guys want to talk more in depth about any of that stuff? The final death of disc. Yeah, yeah that's uh, no it's coming. Google media. It's it's coming. Run is so done. one one thing I did want to mention is uh, that the voice actor for Tiny Tina was confirmed. I don't know her name, but I had no idea that she was also Ashley the voice Birch, actor. Ashley Birch, I believe. Yeah, As- oh. Ashley Burke. Burke. And uh, she's the voice of Aloy. Yeah. So I didn't know that. I didn't awesome. know. That's interesting. And <laughs> that's Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn. She's not the voice actress actress that leaked the Horizon Zero Dawn two stuff though. I believe oh. that was the voice actress from the Star Wars game, Battlefront 2. Oh. I think she leaked information. I think she plays a character in the new Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, uh, you'd have to double-check me on that, though. Leak away. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, come on. How, how can they leak that anyways? It's obviously, they're going to make a sequel. Right? Right? No, it's right? no, just too. news. At this it point. is. It is a leak. But, I mean, I was I was serious about the kill zone or new IP thing because yeah, yeah. They, d- they were hiring for a game that isn't had, it was like a shooter game. And that's not exactly what Horizon Zero Dawn is. And uh, Guerrilla Games did take on new uh, uh, employees from... They take some, took some people from the Rainbow Six Siege team. So I think there is some kind of shooter going on over Guerrilla. So. Yeah, I'd be okay with the new IP, and I'd also be good with a uh, new uh, kill zone because I like that series. Yeah, that that ki- a good series. That, that series is hit and miss. Sometimes After it's fun. One. Sometimes it's not fun. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's. Uh, well, first of all, before we get into this question, uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump around a bit here. Oh. Uh, we're gonna start with uh, one of Dave's beats here. Dave finally beat Anthem. Oh. Yay! He doesn't really seem to care about it that much. No, I Not very enthused. I, I kind of missed the story. I, I, it finally dropped my first epic. Uh, what do you mean, co- um, epic weapon? So I was quite happy about that. Nice. I'll, I'll probably play a little bit more of it, but I was kind of confused as to what was going on with the story, really. It wasn't very strong, and I just, like, the the final boss, it's like, okay, bullet spin, shoot, 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 shoot. Oh, jump around, shoot, 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 shoot. Oh. For quite a long time. The variety is lacking. Yes. That sounds stupid. Especially as I had the uh, whichever Titan it is that can like hover, so you just put it on hover. Oh, the storm. And, and all these ground attacks were pretty useless. Yeah. So it was it was okay. He's still teared up. Is it worth finishing it? Oh uh, yes, it's definitely worth finishing it. And okay. I think I'll probably play it a little bit more because I finally got a machine, a light machine gun that I actually quite like. Okay. I finally got a weapon that felt like decent. Is it the one that shoots like strikes him with lightning? Uh no, it's the it it's just got a high fire rate. It does tend to creep up a bit, but I finally I like that weapon. And then I had um I had the lightning strike on the L one. 
Nice. Okay. Cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, last week or the week before, um, there was an article that was released by Kotaku, and I recommended the guys read it, and then I recommended the we have a, a chat group, Couch Co-op chat group, that none of you guys will ever be a part of, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I recommended the guys in that group to read it, and John Patrick Kelly, JPK, is also one of the people in that group, and he had a bunch of questions about the article, and so I... Uh, we're going to kind of run through some of his questions uh, pertaining to the article. So hopefully you guys kind of are up to up to speed on the article. And uh, as we know, uh, EA is the publisher for Anthem, and, and Bioware is the developer. A lot of people believe that, uh, uh, that EA put a lot of mandates on Bioware, and the Bioware, the reason the game was so broken is that Bioware couldn't live up to what EA wanted, where in actuality, while some of the mandates were a problem for Bioware, Bioware was actually, uh, just didn't know what to make. They didn't know what kind of game they were making for like five yeah. years of development. No clear yeah. vision. No clear vision, really poor management, it seems like. Uh, yeah, it sounds like no was in charge, yeah. basically. Uh, the developer, the, the split off houses, of because the, there's different, there's a Bioware Edmonton, there's Bioware uh, uh, Austin, and then there was another one. Which one is that? Uh, Montreal? Oh, there was a third yeah, one, but it closed sure, down. Uh, it closed down after uh, Andromeda failed. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah. Um, and some of those people went to the different, or they just lost their jobs. But uh, so it just seems like uh, that game f- failure is more about the developers failing and not this like hate for EA. Even though there is some stuff that EA does that they probably could have helped this game. It it sounded it read like it was a perfect storm of conditions. Yeah. Like there's mm-hmm. more than enough frostbite. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The frostbite engine, and then I think the other thing that really killed them from reading or I got from the article was the fact they were trying to implement too much new technology yeah. at the same time. They didn't they didn't reuse any of the stuff that they'd used in previous games that actually worked. Oh, you took it that way. I I took that the all the shooting mechanics came from the Mass Infect Andromeda. From what they had done uh, with that, yeah, I, I maybe some of the mechanics did, but I mean, like from the technology standpoint, like all the all the back end systems the, for the, the support, the multiplayer, there, there the was that. and all the rest. The of interesting it. thing about that is that Bioware Austin is the one that does the Knights of the Old, uh, the Old Republic MMO, and the fact that Edmonton didn't want to hear anything about what they were talking about when it came to like a yeah. MMO game seems kind of ludicrous to me, especially since Edmonton had never really done multiplayer. I mean, they've done a little bit of shooting multiplayer in their Mass Effect games, but yeah. nothing on the level that... Yeah. Uh, well, that's uh, that's kind of why they didn't use the people that actually had the strengths correctly. So, uh, Scott's first question, or it's not Scott, JPK's first JPK. question. They're like the same. Scott, JPK, they're like the same people. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Come on. Oh. Who do you think is at fault, Bioware or EA? I think EA, honestly. Bio- it's easier to blame EA. Bioware all the way. Uh, the the ball was in their court. They spent five years farting around and didn't come up with a story or a mechanism. And as much as you might want to complain about EA putting mandates on them, it, really, if you start with no clear vision and the light allowed design by committee, you generally don't end up with very good results. <laughs> it, it does. It does. It does seem like. I mean, EA is always going to take a like a, a big hit for this, but they you know they mandate because they want to use their engine, and even though yeah. their engine isn't the best engine, yeah. uh, and then but what else did they do? They that was yeah. they, they, okay. They didn't support the engine, but at the same time, Bioware games have never been as big of money makers as like say like FIFA. So I understand why he'll yeah why they didn't get A plus priority service. from a business right. perspective. You're securing your business, so like if you need help at somewhere else for like the one that makes all the money, so you guys can still make your game, it seems like it makes sense. Um, but that's just a business thing. I think ultimately I'm with Dave. Like, what was Bioware doing? Like. I think they got overconfident. They've had a series of real, you know, really well-received games and kind of considered they could do no wrong. And they just, my reading of it was that they they found out that you actually do need some planning and you can't just fix it all in crunch time. Anybody else? Well, I, I feel like it's kind of like AA. I mean, yes, they didn't exactly have a clear vision of what they wanted in the first place, but it's hard to do that when... There's like you have to use this, you have to use that, you have to do this, or otherwise, you're you're off. It's like what? 
how can we do something when you put all these mayonnaise even before we have a story in the first place? It's kind of like... Well, they didn't have a story. They had to I make mean, one up. Yeah, but that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. At the last minute, they made a story up. And they didn't even know what kind of game they wanted to make yeah. to begin with. I, yeah. I, I remember reading that, but it's like EA, even before they even had anything, they had to figure out a way to work all their stuff before the story. Well, into the game. Into I the suppose. Game I suppose. But uh, one thing I think you, I think EA has to give credit. I think EA knows what fun is. And yeah, if you read the article, fun. I mean, Bioware didn't know what they had. They didn't know about. They didn't know if they wanted to keep flying in the game. They kept taking it out. And it wasn't yeah. until that demo with the flying that they showed the EA president that uh, hey, this is super fun. We need yeah. a game around this. And then finally, that is kind of. Bioware's fault, not realizing that that was a fun mechanic. Yeah. But they they just didn't know. I think they're that yeah. it's just leadership at Bioware. Yeah, but it's indicative of like yeah, lack of leadership because no one would make the decision to either cut it or leave it in. Didn't help that the leadership kept on changing. That's yeah. not true. The yeah. vision was mm-hmm. so divided and yeah. nobody actually stuck to it and the vision got very distorted. Yeah, maybe EA, EA is a little bit to be uh, to blame. Maybe yeah. I feel like somebody higher up caused probably, though. them to leave. But well, no, but maybe they. You know, I mean, I don't feel like EA has a lot of hands on with like respawn. Let's say. Yeah. yeah. But maybe they needed to be more hands on with Bioware. Maybe they felt Bioware ha- could handle it. They got this under control. We don't need yep. to put. But maybe they needed to be more involved. In, like, what is going on here? And what is? It just to be honest, it's hard to say. You wrote that article, and there's more than enough blame to go around for everyone. Yeah. It's it's like uh, it, it look it read like a case study in how not to develop a game. <laughs> and yeah. I'm I'm very curious how uh, Frostbite comes into play with all this. So Dice created that, right. which EA owns. Yes. And what do they just have the base model out and they distributed it throughout the company to all the different developers they have and just like have fun, good luck. Or or Dice was, 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 a right. was made for first person shooters, yes. yeah. not third person. Correctly. And that's where they ran into just basic Huge basic issues, yeah. Yeah, but problems. Uh, well, it's Again, th- th- does DICE even support it still? Yeah, DICE still yeah. supports it. DICE okay. still so yeah, they, no. they actually everything is on all these a- teams. There's only one team in EA that does not well, aside from the indie teams, I, I think, but there's only one like uh, AAA studio that doesn't use Frostbite currently, and that's Respawn. All, ty- all Titanfall games and Apex Legends run off Source, and the new Star Wars game is running off Unreal 4. So I don't know how Respawn gets away with like just yeah, doing what they, they want. The past. Must have been something in their contract. That's it must, awesome. it must be. Yeah. 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 They, they've yeah. been nailing it. But all the sports games run on Frostbite, all the Need for Speed games run on Frostbite. Uh, yeah. Battlefield because they don't need to play, pay licensing fees. Right, exactly. right, right. Um, uh, let's see what his next question is, y'all. Can you call Bioware the same Bioware that did the same Mass Effect One and Two, Dragon Age Origins? No. Because the <laughs> no. big players, no, no. Big, because the big players for those games have all jumped ship and gone on to other things. I think one or two of those Golden Age Bioware devs started their own studio. So, uh, yeah, it's no. They, they, they talk Not about either. the Bioware magic in yeah. the article, but that Bioware magic is probably gone. It, may, it might have been more when they started Anthem, but it sounds like they definitely killed it. By the, yeah. Yeah. the writing, the, the magic developers, workers, yeah. yeah. I mean, you won't have that team again because nope. these people, I mean, they said a, they lost a lot of like legacy team members over uh, is it what stress casualties. Like, people would leave for months and either not come oh, back right, or right. come back, yeah. like... Like, that's a level of stress, like, you don't want to have at any company. I've never had a job where I wanted to go into a private room and cry. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, that, that has to be just, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no thanks. Uh, but, you know, you say that, but that is a, that's a common thing at a lot of studios. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would yeah. there was even, in, there was Red even Dead. at Red Dead. I mean, if Red yep. Dead had not been critically well-received, the articles would have been the same. Yeah. You would have heard the same stories yeah. and the same... But a game like you know, if Anthem had done well, we would never have heard any of this story, even if it yeah. was a monster, yeah. hideous story. Well, That's the I problem. also think from reading that article that you know, Anthem was just it was very uh, they made some unwise decisions when they released it, like that first, you know. They made a bad first impression, and it was very hard to recover from it. Well, I think uh, I think if you when you take also li- read that article, how many of the dev developers wanted Dragon Age Inquisition to fail? <laughs> Because yeah. there was clearly problems with the developer, and then the game gets game of the year, 
And so yes. it like <laughs> they were like nothing's gonna <laughs> fix <laughs> until like Mass <laughs> Effect Andromeda came out and that kind of tanked. And then obviously Anthem was already in the shitter before. I mean there was already problems. Well, I, mean, I mean, hey, uh, to Bio Bioware's credit, you're talking about a game that was like five six years in development and the game actually really didn't get made until like the last year year and a half. I mean that is yep. pretty impressive yeah. for a team. The early announcement. Yeah. Look really good. The environment, and they said they're gonna do like weather effects and stuff. I mean, that was 2014. That was like it's not a totally broken really like, game as no, well. Oh, I know, really and it's crazy. I, I, because in that article they have the trailer for the original. They showed it E3, mm -hmm. and if you watch it, it's crazy how different that game is. Because like, oh, look at the weapon I got, and you just. You just fought the bad guy. The weapon drops. They pick it up and they look at it. And they're like, "Oh, that's awesome!" And they equip it and stuff. And it's like, that's not what the. You, uh, in oh, fact, yeah. the players yeah. complain about the fact that you have to go into the menu and deal with that. You know, yeah, well, I love uh, that. Yeah, that's uh, and the whole not comparing it to Destiny, but that's one of the things I like about Destiny is if you, if you collect a weapon, you can click the menu and equip whatever it is glowy thing that dropped and you uh, could you, you still have to go back to the tower and you have it and code it or yeah, decode, decode it your engram yeah, so well, well, it's an engram but sometimes you just pick them up anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so I mean let's be honest I mean Destiny had the same issues yeah. they they were just able to recover from it yeah. and it's you know I mean cause like that game is still pretty shallow that first vanilla Destiny yeah. crazy shallow so boring um wow. I know a lot of you enjoy the game, so does the news change anything how you feel about the game now? Do you feel like you overpaid for the game that only had around a year of development? Uh, no. no. Hey, I paid no. $3.50 at Redbox, so I, <laughs> I, I had a lot of fun with it, and it's still fun to play. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I paid mean, 50 bucks with the metal case and sold the metal case for 10 so for 40 bucks, yeah. I <laughs> feel like I got my money's worth. I mean, there's a lot of developers that worked their asses off on something that they didn't know what they were stressing out for, and I feel good that they're getting paid. I mean, I, I don't feel bad that my money is going to them. I just I think the leadership at Bioware needs to be checked. I do think the game is yeah. fun. I do think there could be a future if they are if BioWare is serious about fixing the game and new content is coming. I will still play the game. I'm done with it for now because there's nothing else for me to do. I put like 50 hours in. I'm I'll be fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to the future of the yeah. game because uh, it can only go up from here. I, and I had a lot of fun with it. So I, uh, let's get more content. I've enjoyed what I've played. I what I'm playing. I'm not. I don't regret it. All. I mean, granted, I got it as a birthday present, but. But I playing, I, I'm not. No, it's a good game. It's not the greatest game in history, but it's it's worth playing. I suppose where I stand is that the Metacritic at 55. I feel isn't representative. I would give it mm -hmm. like a seven. I would say 70. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 70, 75. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere between not, 70 and 75 for me would be a yeah. first score for that game. But I still, think. that's a good game. I mean, it's John, uh, I bought Fallout 76, and it's got a Metacritic <laughs> rating of like 42 or something, and that is a truly broken game. Yep. And this this leads me to my next my kind of thing is like this is a bigger problem these companies releasing games that they have no you know that they probably shouldn't be releasing or that developers not really having a clear idea on what they want to make I mean that's clearly what Fallout 70 yeah. they had this idea for like this sandbox of craziness and it just didn't quite work uh, yeah. I commend them for for the continue to working on it but there is some problems in the industry that like this half-baked games being released is yeah. It's it's because the games are released not when they're ready, but when the you know in the quarters you know yeah, in the it's, money it's, it's the about money cycle the financial results mm -hmm. you know and so things are getting rushed or but yeah. they, they they should they should early I mean Fallout seventy six should have been early access maybe Anthem should have been an early access game it shouldn't maybe they shouldn't have released it at a sixty full sixty dollar price you know yeah. And then maybe, you know, your employees aren't stressing out and crying in the back room or something, you know. Um, and then right alongside of it is Apex Legends, totally free. And oh, that game's good. Doing it. Just great. I mean, I got to feel that they... Uh, it can it can be a broken game if, if it's free. There's, there's that yeah. too, but that game wasn't very broken. Yeah, you know, no, I feel like it responds. A, but that's, I think that's a, a sign of good that. leadership. Yeah. You know, I think that's what's going on there. Yeah, keep your team on target and focus on the things that are actually fun. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thank you, John, for uh, those uh, those lists of questions. Um, I guess we can uh, continue on to uh, and then Dave. You also uh, we're gonna begin with your beat and end this conversation with a beat from Dave because he beat uh, 
Again, beating. you cried? You cried? <laughs> I almost, I almost, sad beat? I almost cried. Just sad beating? I, I didn't oh, be almost. off while crying. I almost cried because it was... Uh, you didn't go eat ice cream after It was the last day of June, and I won't spoil, spoil the ending, but it was it was quite sad. Awesome. Um, and no one else beat anything, right? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. No beats. No beats. I, I didn't technically... I'm getting close. I didn't technically beat anything. Uh, but I did platinum the game. Oh. This, is, this is the first game I platinumed that I never had to beat. <laughs> How's that work? Yeah. How, does, yeah. how, does that how work? many yeah, minutes I'm was a, that again? I'm a uh, so I, uh, I, 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 and I did it in like five to ten minutes. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I should. Get, what you're saying is, <laughs> I, I need what to be you? able to do this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. It'll cost you four ninety nine, but uh, <laughs> oh, oh, it'd be worth it to be ahead of Aaron. <laughs> You already had it, Aaron. Yeah. Even more. Yeah. Uh, the game is called... This is actually probably a Scott game, but uh, it's called uh, Super Weekend Mode, mm. and it's by Teriyaki... What is it? Pixel Teriyaki? Pixel Teriyaki. When he's actually mm-hmm. a British dude. He could be Japanese, but he's a Br- he lives in Britain. Yeah. Um, and I can't really explain it. They, it's like a block shooter, bounce, fire, kill boss. I like all those things. All mashed together in one, <laughs> and like uh, there's, there's like there's like ten gold trophies and one platinum. Oh my god! What? <laughs> so this this guy had a clear vision of the game he wanted to make. No, he makes these type of crazy like kind of like <laughs> oh, uh, he's uh, Japanese, just simple. It's not simple. It can be very hard. Uh, I don't it's like know. An old Atari game. Yeah, it's like yeah. an Atari game with kind of a Nintendo polish, maybe a little bit. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, uh, you don't. I made it to level five, but the game only re- to platinum it only requires you to go to level three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? It doesn't require you to play the game on hard. You just have to start the game on hard. Uh, it's it's just it's oh my that, that sounds it's, so all over the place. This is not American nationalist and platinum kind of, kind of, kind yeah. of. But this is actually fun. I actually had a okay. good time playing it. Uh, and then he has a bunch of different games that you can. They're all supposed. To, so I might go into his catalog and get some more platinums but uh yeah uh super weekend mode i wasn't sure i was gonna say uh, it's it kind of silly i mean literally five to ten minutes i'm not joking oh like, so, <laughs> so <laughs> pretty, pretty much ian paid five dollars for yeah. the trophy no no, no no it was on sale for 3.99 uh, so my yes. guess oh, no, <laughs> what, what caught your attention about this game and why yeah. did platinum uh, oh, oh, what was the platinum uh, no uh, it was on kind of funny games they were t- uh, they were they were doing their show on Twitch and then one of the their uh, people chimed in, in the chat and said hey there's a platinum alert there's a game <laughs> <laughs> you can platinum it in five minutes oh, and I was like no way and they're like they're like and I, I thought home. Golden Minute C was the quickest little uh, gold rush I did but man, man this is <laughs> record breaking yeah. <laughs> you don't have to beat the game to get the platinum yeah it's uh, I don't even know and technically because I only went to level five and died I the game could be like an Atari game and just go on infinitely I have no yeah. idea if it actually or go back round to level one. Yeah, exactly. I I don't I do not know, but uh, it's uh, quite something. Um, all right, so that we'll move on from there. Uh, we got okay. some uh, DLC talk. Resident yeah. Evil Two DLC. Yeah. Ooh. Ghost Survivors. What is, what is, what what's in that? So Ghost Survivors takes place kind of during kind of before, and it's not Chris or Jill or Claire or anybody. It's some guy wearing flannel named Robert, and then some girl in a night dress called Catherine and then an unknown stars kind of hunk mercenary thing like that. What I like about this is it's not like the Resident Evil Survivor where you just go shoot like crazy, get ammo, it's uh, like point based. This is like strategic. Like you go into one area and you have to throw the flash bang. You have to like go through a narrow corridor and your path is like very, very precise. Like you, you have a path of like six zombies and it's like a super narrow corridor and if you don't run through at full speed, they will just basically take over. You have, like, you start with six bullets, you don't get any more bullets, uh, so it's all just strategic. And then uh, the only time you get more items are... Strategery. Strategery. Hmm. I liked it. It was, it was definitely a challenge, and, well, with my red box free rental for the, the weekend. The only important part is, uh, did, did you play as the Tofu? No, not yet. I saw that as a playable thing. You have to actually beat the game and do some conditions. I think you can... Get the DLC or buy it or something. I saw that. I think there's a full every bit of DLC for like four ninety nine or something like that. Yeah. I thought that's what Ian spent so money on, but that's hmm. that. That would be great. 
Yeah. Because uh, the tofu thing looks interesting. Because has been super generous with yeah. DLC lately, so I think, yeah, that's, that's okay. They're just like, here you go, here's everything for five bucks. Yeah. So, Which so tofu and uh, yeah, a tofu is awesome. a character from other Resident Evil, isn't it? Yeah. He? yeah. You're literally a block of tofu wearing a police hat and a baton walking around, and it's still the same physics as every other character in the game. It just looks ridiculous. Oh, that's and funny. And you can get okay. hit as long as you have a body left. Like, they eat the tofu, don't they? I was listening to it, and I looked at the TV and kind of stopped concentrating for a second, and then it was like tofu. <laughs> cat's yeah, trying to what? kill the... the <laughs> sort of trying to electrocute itself, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was stuck to the couch. His hand was literally stuck. All right. <laughs> cat alert. He really wants to be being in the show. I think this yeah. is... Yeah. He's like, oh, you're streaming. I want to I wanna front. It brings us more viewers. Yeah. Probably. And followers. Probably. Cat. That's what cats do. Uh, but there's also poison gas zombies that walk around emitting this purple smoke out of their face. So you can't just be right out on them and then shoot them. you got to do it from a safe distance. Uh, there's also pale heads, which are these naked, super white, giant brain zombies that just walk around. They regenerate. So you really have to just, like, cap them in the knees and then run because they're not going to die easily. <laughs> or high-powered weapons like flamethrower or something like that will do it. Mm. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, I also played some DLC this week. Uh, I streamed about six hours of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I'm playing the the Bloodline uh, or Legacy of the Blade uh, in DLC. And the second chapter is called, I believe, Bloodline or something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, super fun, uh, having a good time. Uh, I'm I'm really enjoying playing the game again. I haven't played it in like a month or two. You've done everything in the game though by now, right? I have right. platinum that game. Mm -hmm. I did actually beat that game and platinum it <laughs> properly. Uh, but no, you more than five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, took me, it took me 120 hours. Uh, I, uh, yeah. So yeah, you shouldn't feel too guilty for getting a platinum win. Uh, right. Yeah. So and but you can't do everything in that game though. Like mm -hmm. I look at my quest book and I still have like a bazillion quests. Uh, yeah. And now with the DLC, it's opened that up again. Um, it's fun. The DLC is really uh, entertaining. It's funny, a little predictable, um, and just finishing up the final chapter. But uh, yeah, super cool, super fun. Uh, if you guys haven't played Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which none of you have, I recommend it. Yeah, <laughs> some someday. I played it for uh, one hour on PC, so it. I can get. Oh, that's that. That's true. But just a uh, quick side note: I've decided to join the Dave and Ian challenge of Modern Warfare Remastered. Oh, so sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. almost done playing it on veteran. Hmm? Oh. Almost done. I yeah, did. Wow. I didn't play it on veteran. I played it on. Yeah, there was a challenge there. Dave put yeah. that on. Oh, I don't want to say put that. I apologize, <laughs> ladies. I, I did forgot, not mean that. I forgot Dave wasn't playing it on veteran. Well, you yeah, managed to make it past the. Uh, yes. That yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah both of us. The uh, first wheel. That's yes. the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Yes. And then there's a Good part job, that's guys. harder. So yeah. I, yeah. yeah it, suppose it gets worse. Uh, I saw that Jared passed it, and I was like, nah, all right, fuck. And then I went. Yeah, the worst is possible. Give it a chance. Um. So yeah. So the modern warfare thing's happening. Uh, Aaron. Yes. You playing Hitman. I am. It's. A, it's a, I'm frustrated right now with it. <laughs> so you're not playing it anymore. I played it and then. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll <laughs> never play it again. <laughs> well, the problem is you get stuck at certain parts where you have to kill certain characters, and then once you kill them, hence hit Hitman. Yes. <laughs> people will come after you again, and the problem is you can't even go into the the level I'm in. Without being unarmed, you no no armor as you get killed on sight pretty much. It's ridiculous. Mm. And then I finally get past without armed, and then I try and go past the security guards. And the problem is, they recognize you almost any goddamn outfit you have. It's like you just was the floral guy. They recognize you. You go into the little um little area, beat up one of the guys, take their security outfit. They recognize you. It's like, what the hell am I supposed to do here? Fake mustache? Of course. They recognize you. <laughs> I feel like the whole game was one big costume change. Like, you can just change yeah. immediately yeah. into anyone's do, clothes. Do you get to cover your bald head? Yes, with a hat. Yeah. Okay. You could just but go on the interwebs and cheat. Yeah, that's true, I could. Aaron, uh, is, <laughs> is there a wheelchair in Hitman? No. You know what game there is? The Surge. Oh, <laughs> that's right, The Surge. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. How's that going? I'm Wolfenstein too. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Whoops, I do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's right. Was there was a wheelchair scene in Wolfenstein too. Yeah. 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 But uh, the surge starts that way. You're in a wheelchair and you get your bionic suit. So that's uh, a good. Hence why he gets the bio uh, transition. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But uh, I made it to the second area. So I I beat that boss we talked about last time. 
that I couldn't beat. Yeah, it just takes a lot of parrying, or not really parrying, but it, yeah, I guess it is parrying because when when you block, it pushes the enemy back and gives you time to get a few hits in. So you just have to take your time with that. Uh, and Ian, as a hint, if you go back to him, uh, when he does his barrage of missiles. Uh, just kind of go go near him, and he hits himself. Oh, okay, okay. And then he'll be down Pro for a while, tip. so you can just nice. smack him down for a bit. Nice. All right. You gonna stick with it? You gonna Bloodborne this one? Uh, I don't know if I'll stick to it as hardy as Bloodborne, but I'm I'm gonna keep chugging away at it. I and think all bets are yeah. off. Jared's life is about to change. Yeah. Oh, that's true I, too. I'm gonna yes. have a new child in about a week, so yeah, I don't child, know how much the uh, sequel. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so I don't know how much gaming I'll be able to get in for a little while. Yeah, yeah, they went in packs. <laughs> there, there's other <laughs> things that are more important, unfortunately. <laughs> oh boy, it's twenty hours in quick. Uh, yeah, already there. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, just me then. <laughs> well, you know, all you have to. Do. I mean, I mean, you know, it's it's survival, right, Jared? Yeah. It's, it's trying to survive. It is. Yeah, that's that's the surge. Survive. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's kids. It's yeah. survival. Oh. Survival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do something when you're not getting any sleep. Well, you know what else? Uh, you have to survive in No Man's Sky. Oh yes, <laughs> such a good game. Trash <laughs> trying to do all the segues here. I know it, it, that game. That was a good one actually, as well as the first one. <laughs> but um, no, that one. I'm enjoying that game again. I forgot how good that game was. I've literally played about four hours of it in the last two days. Yeah, it's a great game. I, I, I played a little bit of it this week too, but not not a ton. The planet yeah. I was on was really cool. Yeah. I saw you guys playing it so i pulled it out of my drawer of games and it'll probably go in this week yeah oh, man i it, it looks a hell of a lot better time to jump in yeah, I guess so. i'm waiting for the updates the big no uh, mm. d- i don't we can only play don't. Four, we can only play four player co-op right now when the updates drop we might be able to play five but only four of us are playing right now anyway, yeah that's so true we're, that's true we're good. Until i get and then vr yeah and oh, vr yes. soon i, I, I want to play vr no man's sky with you i probably won't Oh, I just play dude. regular VR. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Damn it guys. Ah, uh, no. We are getting dusty. Well, we can, you can be in VR. Yeah, and we can play I know, I know, but jeez, come on. Uh, also, uh, I'll just mention this. Uh, also, a survival game, Conan Exiles. I played a little bit, but I've gotten my wife hooked on it, and so she's been playing a shit ton of it. So uh, it's fun to play that with her. Uh, I think I streamed a couple hours of uh, us playing together. That's yeah, I think that game's just not gonna make the cut for me. Either. It's probably it's not a Dave game. No, I know it's like I had some. I was going through my list and I'm just like, yep, no, nah, I'm, I'm never gonna. I mean, he doesn't one. like yeah. boobs. I mean, Dave likes <laughs> dick cheese, as we learned tonight. Oh yeah, I believe it's called Fumunda cheese. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> And we're going to finish this, uh, oh no, we got, uh, well, Dave, uh, uh, before we get to the finishing, the finishing move, uh, you played some Lenoir. Yeah, I, I did play some Lenoir. Lenoir. I know I saw that as soon as I typed it in the phone. Um, well, it did also correct to last Nore. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, I played two missions of that last night and got berated by the cop because I didn't solve the second mission. Even though I shot a warehouse full of bad guys and stuff, it was like... Do you like this game? For, for those of you that are confused, it's L.A. Noir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our game. It is L.A. Noir. screwing around. I, I, I like it. I don't love it. But uh, one of the things I do like about it is the way each story is kind of separate. And, it, you know, it's like half an hour to an hour for each little one. And I kind of like th- I like that it's broke up like that because it's really easy to just dip in, play a story. I like how you promote through the forces. Yeah, yeah, yeah that seems so. I'm I'm enjoying it. I play, and um, it it's kind of nice in some respects because the uh, gunplay mechanics and the controls. I'm so used to them from playing all the rock. Of a rock star games. How do you do on the interrogations? I did terrible. Yeah, I suck I every time. I just cannot tell which option I'm meant to choose, whether I'm meant to be accusing them or. Yeah, you're supposed to be looking at their cop. facial expressions. Yeah, and unless it's like blatantly obvious, then I'm, I always choose the wrong one. But I swear, even even at times where I, I thought it was good. blatantly <laughs> obvious, I selected the dialogue choice and they're like, you know, nope, you fucked up. 
I, like I hit the point where I just accused yeah. every single time just because I was tired of like you messed up on this case, you messed up on this case. I'm like, yeah. guess what? Everyone's guilty after this. <laughs> yeah. so I just, like, yeah. I'm like, surprised. Like, that that really like, tell me the truth. And that's how the country can. got the way it is, guys. <laughs> that's real. <laughs> 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 the only mission. So 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 <laughs> yep. Yeah. I have a g- I have a question uniquely uniquely for Dave. I've never played Le Noir, but uh. It's it kind of the game kind of reminds me of the getaway for some reason. Does it do that to you? Yeah, um, now you say it, I can kind of see that it's it's a little different though. Right, I I get the whole. But it's more in the There's like an aesthetic what, to it. No, that, that reminds the me. visual style with the older cars and the city and the radio stations. Yeah, it is very of its place. Cool, cool. And now we will finish move, and we'll just uh, let. Uh, Scott, just steam us to death. Steamroll. <laughs> steamroll. 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 Steam roll. Is this what, uh, is this <laughs> what we're calling this segment now? A Cle- Scott steamroll. Scott steamroll. A Cleveland steamer? Yes. I'll get to All it. Over a Scotland faces. steamer? So because of World Next Door, I am now a steamer. I will say thank you to multiple, multiple friends. Nick, uh, Jared, Benito, Scott, and I don't know, probably some Me? Yeah, Ian. <laughs> I now have 978 Steam games to play. My my plate is full. My bucket list is overfloweth. So I picked the top top three, possible top oh five, that I actually did play for more than five minutes. Um, and a lot of these actually are on Switch Sky or on PSN. So it's Skyrim not like Naked Edition. I have not gone down that route yet. <laughs> Cannibal mod scares me away. That That's a thousand dollars. One Steam game of the week. Um, was Minute, M I N I T. That was the hot steamer. Picture Tamagotchi meets Legend of Zelda that you die every 60 seconds. So it's like you go west, you talk to someone, you get a sword, start over. Okay, you go south, you keep that sword, you find like a bucket. I don't know what that bucket's for. You go, yeah, and it's just like you start the same place every time, but the loop is like 60 seconds. And there's some characters that intentionally their dialogue pieces little letter by letter by letter so like you need to go to them yeah so waste your time yeah. like talk slowly and you're if like you mm-hmm. go to the north i'm like oh i got 10 seconds left all right i'll come back in like the next next round so it almost is like the uh, this this replay uh over and over and over but the the graphics are black and white cute see the tamagotchi yeah, characters boy. yeah and it's it mm. just it's a fun concept i love the idea of it Simple game and definitely worth Isn't it. Isn't it also a Devolver Studio game? I think that is, yeah. Probably. But yeah, I've been interested so. in that game. I'll, I'll pick it up someday. Definitely worth checking out. Um, second one I played, The Yogg, spelled Y-A-W-H-G. I actually played this at Nick and Katina's, and it's a great group game. You can play multiple people. Um, yeah, we could actually play this after the show. Mm-hmm. It's story-based, and you make a choice. So you're the woodcutter or the alchemist or this. And the art's really cutesy. It's kind of like, I don't know, fairy tale story. <laughs> storybook um but it has some very dark scenes like you could just say i'm gonna try making a potion or alchemy and you end up summoning demons from hell and destroying the entire village (laughs) and the game ends for all three of you nice um but yeah it's it's short like it actually like our our entire playthrough was maybe 10 minutes that we played through um i burned a garden down nick like was the one who summoned the demons from hell and katina like got rich i don't know making uh, money from woodcutting. So yeah, story game, hmm. the Yog, Y W G, and the third one I played was Pony Island. It's weird. It's creepy. It's meta, meta evil because you're just playing this arcade game and Pony then Island. someone comes up to you. I might actually steam stream it with um, like a unicorn mask that I just picked up recently. You uh, should stream some of cool. that steam steam stuff. I will. I I think I'm doing a dry run for like five minutes to see if I actually like the game and then I'll do like an actual playthrough. But, but oh you oh need oh an initial oh like on, yeah, on yeah. your computer you can just start streaming oh and then that oh can that's be right. your Wait, game. You don't have to. You can just keep streaming five minutes and not shut it all yeah, down. It's, it's and not like switch. a PlayStation, when you switch game, it'll stop. But then what's yeah. my category? My title is going to be like random. You just update it on your phone. Yeah. 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 Do right. your yeah. dashboard. You're just saying how you totally enjoyed that minute game. I did. Just think of it like a big version of that. You play five <laughs> minutes of random <laughs> games. Yeah. Anyway, put me on this word. I'm going to stream it. It's just bizarre. Yeah, you spell Scott with a five. See? Hmm. It's just a, just a design. Lost on me, baby. <laughs> okay, but, yeah. Lost me, bud. <laughs> All right, and that's that's it for my st- Scott steamroll steamroll week. Cleamer, 
Cleaver. Are, are we doing a mobile minute this week? Steam it. No. Oh. 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 We haven't done it. No. Aaron doesn't play video games. Is that, is that video. game over? We can't pressure him too much. No. no it's not game over. Oh, okay. We're okay. streaming we, right now. We have to give him a break for streaming. We yeah, he's right. streaming. Running. We're not going to pressure him too much. Streaming. Stream. We are going to do some uh, cash co optionals, though. So who hey. wants to go first? Game of Thrones season eight. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Oh, <laughs> That's it? That's not that exciting. Come yeah, on, give us something. It's awesome. I loved the first episode. It's a lot of reunions, so I, I loved it. <sighs> I've watched the uh, last episode of uh, The Grand Tour. Mm-hmm. Kind of sad. I think he was really crying. He was? Um, I started the Santa Clarita diet. Which oh, is yeah, with Drew Barrymore. Yeah, with Drew Barrymore. <laughs> she's, yeah, she's quite hot in that. Oh. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's stupid, but it's like... 25 minutes an episode and it's just fun to watch it's a good watch yeah, yeah. it's just like you don't have to pay attention yeah, they're all just pretty that's a nice Drew Barrymore's a zombie mm. yeah mm. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that like I zombie, zombie where the chick's a zombie yeah, yeah. It yeah. sounds like it's it it's way more know, goofy right. comedy romance yeah. family drama yeah she's a zombie and the family help her murder people <laughs> nice <laughs> so yeah other than that the not much else. I uh, I have been uh I, the oh, last weekend I got a new beer. I, it's this it's actually part of a gaming thing, but um it's called the Yakima Craft Company uh the, the up in Yakima itself and it's Wizard IPA. It's good. It's light. It's it's actually relatively cheap. It's like about a like eight bucks for a six pack, but but it's up only up in Washington, so it's like a, a, the sales tax on I it. I believe most people pronounce it Yakima. Well, Yakima. 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 All I know yeah, is it's the Yakima? armpit of Washington. Yakima. All I know is it's the armpit of Washington. That's so, hey, hey. I feel like I'm a fan of No. What? Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, Dave. If I had to choose between living in Yakima. I got my first speeding ticket in Yakima. Ooh. No, they. Yeah. The silver the, bullet, baby. Oh, oh silver bullet. bullet. <laughs> Uh, it's fastest hug and chug in the galaxy. Yeah, what was the fastest speed you get on that one? <laughs> or fastest... <laughs> what was the <laughs> like biggest Yakima take Yakima police uh, will, <laughs> will sh- reflect that. Yeah, That's a long straight highway through there. Mm. It's just when you actually go through the town, I, it was a speed trap. But no, I, I, I'd rather not go to Yakima. I don't ever have a reason to. But anyway, the beer itself is delicious. It says yeah. Yakima Valley Hops. I mean, oh, it, it, well, if you're to visit the area, area remember, right? stay, stay in uh, uh, Spokane. Spokane is actually pretty cool. I've heard yeah, about Spokane. I have, nice. Nice. I have in-laws it's, up in Yakima. It's but like I don't this visit weird them. hidden city that nobody Does knows about. Yakima it has Valley a Hops? lot of people there. Oh. Oh yeah, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I just uh, they they make good beer. I'll say that much. It's it's made up in that area with Mosaic hops, and it is delicious. I recommend getting a six pack next time you're up in Vancouver, or visiting your local special bottle shop like uh, down here in Portland. But just John's John's Market. John's Market. But also, I just found a little gas station up at uh, Yakima out in Fruit Valley area of Vancouver. <laughs> it's good. Just try it out. What are you doing in Fruit Valley? Uh, Ashley has friends up there. The Wife, I see. She has fans up there. Figured to get a six pack. It's worth it. Cool. Mm. Yeah. Scott, I got some shows knocked out finally. Uh, Broad City just finished its last season. I need to get back in that show. Really cute. Show. The last season wrapped up. They brought characters back from earlier seasons, so it was a nice send off. Um, nice. Saw a Christmas zombie musical called Anna and the Apocalypse. That looks funny, actually. It's cute. Yeah, it's like a kind of like Glee, but uh, the zombie kids were really fun. There was a bowling alley one where they crush a zombie head with a bowling ball <laughs> and then nice. uh the head like rolls into the gutter ball exchange and like comes back i don't know that was like that sounds cool a funny little moment it was a cute movie and then uh i don't know Just so while, while his stuff. brain farts going on uh, I, I had a memory <laughs> recall of uh, She-Ra and the Princesses of Power I believe <laughs> <laughs> season two yeah, yeah, this, this I week that name. I think the 19th Oh, and then I had one co-optional, which was I discovered a PlayStation 1 at the Goodwill. This is $15. And so it works. I bought it, and it works. And uh, I was really disappointed when I got it home, and I took it apart, and there was no mod chip in it. Oh. Which means I have to actually buy games. No, you can do the swap trick. Right. Put the lid open, put a little grocery that's, bag tie. This one is way too nice for that, because it's like... It did look really nice. It's really clean and amazing it, shape. There was no dust in it and all the rest of it. Mine's in pretty good shape. Yeah, which is why I wanted to borrow Metal Gear Solid from you because I've never played the first one. I forgot. 
Yeah, I know. Dave, yeah, I got a game or two you can borrow too. I think I have Final Fantasy Seven. I have a bunch and of memory cards. I have I, a bunch of PlayStation games. I actually. have Metal, Metal Gear Solid, Scott. No, I have to go in the attic and get my. Mem- I've got a PlayStation One memory card from those Tight. two games that I had. So the surviving yep. members, yeah. So it's what two hundred and fifty-six megabytes. Was it that big? That was big. Or was that yeah. eight megabytes? It was, no, eight. It was eight. Yeah, yeah pretty, it was pretty eight small. slots, wasn't it? If I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah. So and then yeah. there's some games that took like three or Fighter four Maker. slots. Fighter yeah. Maker took an entire card. Oh. Dedicated. That's where I moved to Mega Memory cards, yeah. which I'll never do again. Mad Cat's brand. Breakdown. Oh, all, wow. Mad <laughs> Cat's. all your content. Yeah. Yep. 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 Mad if you don't Cat's. care about your game saves, then Mad Cat's is yep. your answer. Exactly. Yeah. Mad Cat's is what fried my first PlayStation. Wow. It's the first controller I ever broke. <laughs> anyway, needless to say, I, I bought that. I'm and not I was, kidding. I was, was like, first well, that was a good broke. deal. I was going to sell it, and then I put the game in, and I was like, oh man, I kind of like having the PlayStation One. I think I might keep it. <laughs> Fifteen Just bucks. The startup sound. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. so cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need Destruction Derby. Um, yes, yeah, wipe, uh, wipe out 2097 as well. Wipe out three. Somebody needs to make like just cheap games like that, like Destruction <laughs> Derby. If only they made a PlayStation oh, Classic with the... Oh, they tried and oh, failed. Oh, they failed because <laughs> they failed all the wrong yeah. games on it. Yeah. Oh. Only they had games we liked. No. <laughs> Some of those games are bad. Anyway. I feel like we're uh, overshadowing Ian. He no, I thought, Scott oh, yeah. had, I thought Scott had another he one. He just kind of mumbled mm-hmm. off. Oh. Mumbled off. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he has nothing. Well, I, have two, I have two movies. Uh, first of all, I saw Bumblebee finally. And I thought it was really good. I want to see that. So I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. I mean, if you are a Gen 1 Transformers fan, that whole opening sequence is pretty dope. It's because it's uh, a Volkswagen it's wheel again. No, I mean, have you, have you seen it? No. Oh, no. The full, the actual taking place on Cybertron and the characters actually battling in Cybertron. Ooh, wow. Like actual okay. Transformers okay. focus. Nah, I have to see this. Super dope. Uh, mm. it's, it's the best Transformers movie. Better than all, I mean, it's, it's not directed by Bay, so okay. it's directed by so the guy who did. Really uh, good, it's directed by the guy who did the animated film uh, Cuba and the and the Two Strings or yeah. Cuba, whatever. Oh, it's I called. love that movie. Cuba so and the Two Strings. Yeah. Whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah, that Travis Knight who directed that is the the guy who directed Bumblebee. Oh. Anyway, it's really good. Uh, I really recommend it. The other game, if you are interested in what we were talking about earlier about Anthem and like developer craziness. There is a Netflix original film, or not an original film, it just came to Netflix, it's an indie film, uh, but it's a documentary called Playing Hard, mm. and uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's about the development process of the game For Honor. Which uh, was free last month. Which was free last month, oh. uh, and uh, it, that's a Ubisoft game. Uh, it's really interesting, I guess this guy who lives in Montreal noticed that uh, Ubisoft was starting to take a big presence in the community, and he's not really interested in video games, but he's a filmmaker, so he thought he would uh, see if he could make a film about what about making a game. And uh, he spent a lot of time with, I mean, obviously a crazy amount of time with these uh, uh, developers, and they picked three of the main guys to follow. And... Uh, at, at a certain point, Ubisoft kind of revoked his ability to go wherever he wanted to in the studio. And he really had to convince them to uh, let him finish the film. And uh, to Ubisoft's uh, credit, they didn't, they let him back in, they let him complete the film, and they didn't uh, make any changes to his film. So it's an extremely, uh, you know, candid look, you know, transparent view Ooh. of the development process in a video game. It's really interesting. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's the best documentary of all time, but it is really interesting to watch, so I recommend it, especially for people that are in, interested in video games. And that was Playing Hard. Playing Hard. Playing hard. Yeah, on Netflix. Yeah, I'll have right. to check it out. Is yeah. it, uh, like, a long one? It's like an hour and a half, two hours. Okay. Oh, nice. That's not too bad. It's watchable. Yeah, it's a full film. Huh. Uh, and that's my, uh, that's my co-optionals. Yeah. Got two more. Oh, yeah, more! More! more. Oh, Stuff in the real world. Are you doing oh. Dang it. Stuff in the real world. Uh, I went to a VHS exchange event at Tanker, which apparently happens pretty pretty regularly. And it's like stacks and stacks of old VHS tapes. I managed to get like a episode of the original Ghostbusters. I got... Awful. This is, this is Awful. I got some Disney clamshell uh, you know movies. You know where I go to I get my VHS tapes? My dad, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who is 62 and does not have any DVDs. Or the yes, garbage can. can. <laughs> uh, yeah, <that's laughs> Collectibles, folks. Collectibles. You can go to Bend and go to the last blockbuster. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah the sun, sun bleached yeah. section. Yeah, they're not going to have VHS there, titles. are they? I don't think yeah. uh, I mean, they just have DVD. I think, yeah, I think just fucking DVD. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 
I mean, I used to have a whole shitload yeah, of VHS. Yeah, yeah you just loaded your Max VHS. I did watch. That was great. Um, it's good to I have a few that, left. So. Just are crazy, just kind of close to my heart. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I need that in my life. Mm-hmm. There's another tape. tape's awful. One last tape. Uh, Retro Game Bar opens next month. It is uh, collectors who have everything from Atari to uh, like um, PlayStation. Uh, and they want to share their collection. So basically, you come and have a drink. Uh, and they set up the consoles, and they basically have this insane collection that you can just kind of pick and grab games. I really want to go for the opening to just like meet the guys who run it. But I like the idea that. Yeah. You know, you have your arcades here and there, and it's pretty much the same thing in pinball and stuff like that. Maybe you do want to play Coloco or the Odyssey and stuff like that in like a good working condition. And for collectors to actually share their collection with other people yeah. and make it a bar, that's I like I like that direction. So, uh, Retro Game Bar opening on Martin Luther King Southeast Portland. Nice. That sounds fun. RGB. All right, guys, let's get out of here. Uh, uh, just one more thing. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Everyone. <laughs> I'd like to thank our new sound engineer. Oh, yes. Yes. It sat on top of the oh, sound yeah, the equipment. Doing a good job. It's warm, so it sits. He's kind of in the shot. Not really. Yeah. No, he's not really in the shot. He almost <laughs> is in the shot. We can yeah, we can pre- put him in the shot. Yeah. Paris, you want to hold him up oh. real quick? Did you get him on this fucking whatever this is? He did went willingly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's get the picture. Oh, yeah. 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 And there's a couple of them yeah. on there. If he fits, he sits. <laughs> and he sits. Yeah. He's up there. Fits. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, all right, gentlemen. Uh, ho- hopefully, <laughs> hopefully next week we will have a, a guest on. Yeah. yeah but it's possible we may not. Um, so we'll be slogging it over to Aaron's. Well, Jared, Jared <laughs> it was nice knowing you. Jared, it was nice knowing you. I'll, I'll be up for an unknown yeah. period of time. Might pop so. in I'm gonna say this podcast is gonna get so much better. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say just a, oh. I'm gonna say just a week and he'll be back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just yeah we, we'll see. Thanks for the Steam games. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm out. See you later. We'll see ya. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I want to thank you all for listening and remind you that you can leave feedback on Twitbook, Insta Face, and Gram at Couch Co-op Shows. Remember, all one word. No hyphen. Also, try following us on twitch.tv slash the Couch Co-op Show, where no one came onto the show tonight. Three viewers come to but oh, came and it's gone. It's probably Jared kind of checking every once in a while. Weren't you on Twitch? No? Oh, yeah. I thought someone... No, my, uh, phone, my phone failed. Oh. Uh, oh yeah, wow. last, last week we had... A bazillion, not a bazillion, but we had quite a chatty yeah. group of people in there. Yeah. This week, nobody. What, what can you say? We just outstreamed them. I guess. Too much I content. Guess. Too much content. <laughs> um, remember, you can find our podcast wherever they're sold. Subscribe to us. Leave a comment. It's always awesome. I want to thank Jared. Of course. Aaron. Arigato. Scott. Hello. And Dave. I play the game so you don't have to. <laughs> for joining me here on the couch for Couch Co-op. I mean, reminding you to please be excellent to each other. Wild stallions!